Hi, I'm Dee Ramirez. We're here at the home of Icon Collective in downtown LA. For this episode, we're going to be focusing on producing beats and drums for our track. And what I thought was really interesting was to bring in my friend here, Steve Duda, who's uh, actually just developed a brand new plugin, which is out now, uh, called Nerve. Steve Duda, as you know, is uh, Dead Mouse's studio partner, but he's also a computer programmer at Elite, and he's actually developed this plugin. It's actually a drum sequencer sampler style thing. <laughs> plugin that we're going to be using. Um, so what we're going to be doing for this particular episode is actually splitting it into two parts. Steve is going to show us Nerve, he's going to take us round, show us the features and the functionality etc. And then for the second part we're going to be uh, actually using it to produce the beats in our track that we're working on here. So uh, so off we go, let's, uh, let's talk about Nerve. All right, yeah. Nerve is something that I'm really excited about. It's a brand new VSD instrument uh, plugin, as Dee said. It's um, something that you can run in any host program that you use, Ableton Live or Logic, as we're going to be running it today as an audio unit. So it's both Mac and PC, and it syncs right up to your sequencer and tempo. And it's, a, it's just a really rapid way to get beats done. Um, what we're going to be doing today with it, uh, eventually, after I give you a quick walkthrough, is showing you how we're going to take the existing parts that we've already done and reworking them, uh, remixing, if you will, uh, rearranging and such inside of Nerve. So looking at the screen here, you can see uh, Nerve comes up. Here's its interface. And what you've got off the top is the 16 pads you can see in the middle. These are where samples get placed. You can drag them, drag and drop them in from uh, you know, the browser inside your host program or drag in files right off of the Finder um, or load existing drum kits that come with Nerve. Uh, you can see in the top left here, there's a word drum kits. If you click on that, you get a list of the various sound designers and the default drum kits that come with Nerve. If you create your own kits using samples on your hard disk or whatnot, you can also s save them and they will appear in this list. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, and pick up a drum kit here. And you can see that Nerve will now show the waveform for this currently selected pad down here. Um, this blue area that has appeared is the envelope, so that allows you to sculpt how the sound reacts uh, volume-wise over time. So it's really easy to make it more staccato or give it a little punch, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so if you click on the pad, you'll hear the sample trigger, as we did there. Uh, so you can click around on the pads and hear the sounds. Uh, it's very easy to scroll through different drum kits as well. Once you've loaded one, these arrows in the very top left will allow you to navigate to the next drum kit and the next one and so on. Once you've uh, either selected a drum kit or loaded in some sounds, you can process and tweak them further with the pre-calculated effects. And this is something uh, most of the sound designers and a lot of people that have gotten uh, to beta test nerve are really excited about. Uh, these pre-calc effects allow you to really mangle, twist, and stretch and sculpt the sound into something completely unrecognizable and new. So it's really easy to take a kick drum and make it a little more bendy or more subby uh, or clean it up a bit. Um, or dirty it up a bit, sort of anything you want to do. You can do a lot with these effects right here. Um, they're pre-calculated, which means they don't take any CPU load when you're actually running the plugin. So you can use them to all your heart's content, and you could use all 20 what odd uh, number of them all at one time, and they're not going to hurt your CPU one bit. Uh, it just calculates it once, and then it's rendered onto the sound that's in memory, and then you're done. Uh, so. Let's uh, just go through a few of these really quickly because they're, they're really fun and kind of unique. This is all DSP algorithms that I've coded myself. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, clicking on a various pad if you want to find one that we want to process. Um, let's uh, take that and say apply a little bend to it. You can see that the, uh, the sample waveform changes as well as you see this temporary sort of bending icon showing you how the uh, sound is being stretched. This might be a little better on a kick drum, say, so let's switch over to the kick here. You can hear the kick drum now is going to get more sort of punchy and bendy. So you can that's like the feature in the 909 kick drum, isn't it? There's that's a, right, yeah, yeah. You can really take even just a simple sine wave and you can, with the right amount of bend, which isn't too extreme, but get the right amount and you can get really a 909 type kick drum out of mm. the simplest of sounds. So uh, the bend is pretty useful. The stretch is a, is a granular time stretch. It will make the sound file actually become a lot longer. 
I like this bit. This is my favorite. Yeah, that's a, that's a handy one. And this is a granular pitch shift as well, which can be interesting on certain sounds that you want to maintain the rhythmic timing of. If you had a funky guitar loop or something like that, you can change the pitch and the time doesn't change on the sound. Yeah. Uh, there's a re-pitch here, which is uh, also changing the pitch of the sound, but this is more like what you'd expect from a conventional sampler, although it's doing it highly oversampled, so it's a really high quality uh, interpolation of the sound. Um, so if you really wanted a drastic change of the pitch, um, you can use that. Uh, the snap one's pretty cool. This is a, a unique effect. The snap um, will do some wave shaping to the transient uh, or the front of the sound, so it allows you to get a, a sound that's more punchy than the original sample would be. And you know, there's transient shaping types of plugins and such that, that you can you know, process the transient of the sound, but this one is a little unique in the sense that it can just uh, will crossfade gently back to the original sound and it's doing something very harsh for a very minute amount of time. You know, I've done a lot of sound design over the years and one thing when designing kick drums I always find is you want a nice sinusoid for the tail of the sound as it's decaying away. Um, that way you just have this very pure low end, something that's really just hitting the subwoofer. But, but especially, you know, in the dance club, you want this smacky attack, something that's really going to just rip through all frequencies. Mm. But just for this very brief moment in time, you don't want something that's, you don't want this long, loud, you know, basketball in a gymnasium kick drum most of the time. Uh, you don't want something that's just going to take up too much space in your overall mix. So you really want it, you know, sort of uh, psychoacoustically speaking, you want something that makes its presence known so it has this rhythmic event and this point in time that is defining with all this frequency harmonic content and then very quickly goes into the sinusoid yeah. sub subness so you're just feeling it in, the, in your body and everything like that. So um, I was designing a whole bunch of kick drums uh, which actually come with Nerve in, in the wave folders but I was doing those all sort of by hand using various sound editing programs and one thing I realized is, well, you know what, that would be a pretty cool effect to make, something that just really uh, tweaks the first couple milliseconds of the sample extremely and then sort of gently crossfades that out so you don't hear any kind of artifact as it's disappearing. Um, so, you, so that's really what the snap parameter here does. It's a, a great way to really take a sound, as you can see as an example here, from, from this, which is just sort of a click at the start, to something that's got a little bit more punch. Yep. Um, not the not the best of example examples, sounds here, yeah. but um, on certain percussion sounds and clap sounds and snares and stuff like that, it's designed to be versatile across the board um, to just add an extra emphasis that something, it's more than you would really get from a compressor and it's not tweaking the overall dynamics of the sound. So, so the snap parameter is pretty cool. It also works in reverse, so you can actually pull out if you find a sound that's sort of too punchy. You don't have to mess with the envelope necessarily. This is a quick way to just make the actual transient portion of the sound less extreme. Uh, moving onwards on these effects here, we have a spread, which is um, something I've left in. It's really only useful for uh, very stereo sounds, if you bring in a stereo drum loop or something like that. It's an FFT-based effect, which means it's doing fancy math, essentially, to pull out the center channel. In other words, what the left and right speakers have in common, or the left and right signals. So you can either uh, increase the center channel's amount, or you can pull it out altogether, so you're just left with what would be in the left and right speakers. Um, so that's something that can be very interesting if, if you're running a full mix into it, say, for, uh, you know, if you've, if you've pulled a bar out of a full mix, you can get rid of anything that's in the middle, for instance, vocals or kick drum or anything that's in the middle, and just be left with the extraneous stuff. So uh, depending on how th the thing was mixed that you're bringing in, you can do pretty amazing things. You can, uh, you know, for instance, if it was a mono loop that someone put a stereo reverb on, you can pull out the mono loop, and now you're just sort of left with that washy reverb that was added to it. So oh, cool. things, things that you can't do with, say, EQs and compressors yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and then these next parameters moving along here are the, the resynthesis parameters, uh, starting with sine, saw, square, tri, and sub. What these allow you to do is resynthesize the sound into new wave shapes. So uh, it's, it's analyzing the sound's um, frequency content and it's resynthesizing. You see, for instance, if I take saw, it's taking the sine wave and turning it into a sawtooth wave. Um, so it's adding all of these harmonics that weren't present in the original sound uh, by calculating the frequencies of the original sound. Uh, so this, these can be very interesting for sculpting a sound into something really new. Um, the, one of the most interesting ones, I think, is just the simplest, in a sense, is the sine parameter, because this, especially on kick drums, this can be very useful. Sometimes you might find yourself with a, a kick drum that you really like, but it just sort of has this noise 
element in it. And you're kind of like, well, I really like the way that it bends and the subbiness of it, but I just wish it wasn't so dirty. And so you can pull out all of that altogether if you use uh. this sign, and if you turn it up to 100%, it's now gotten rid of everything that isn't that fundamental uh, wave. So now you're left with the purity. This kick drum is really just a sine wave to begin with, so it's not, not the best example of using that technique. But you can see in reverse, too, you can also use it to the negative where it pulls out the fundamental and you're left with everything else. Yep. In this case, it's just a little click. Um, you can get similar results from using a filter, but it's, it's very different that this is really just affixing you right to that fundamental frequency. Mm, yep. So it uh, can be very interesting to just get rid of sub subbiness or, or fundamental or added in. Um, so that's the sign and the saw works similar as I showed you. Square works similar as I showed you, turns it into a square wave. You can hear that, it's very chip tunesy or something like that. And then a triangle wave, again, very it's a good way to get your Nintendo kick drum. And then sub, sub it was actually a, a sub harmonic. So you can see that it sort of moved to half speed, you could say, or half the frequency. Um, and that's basically what it's doing. It's filtering the sound and it's, and it's trying to create a version of it that's an octave down or a subharmonic. And then, you, then the amount control is going to set sort of the wet and dry between the, the normal and the octave down version. Um, so that can be, uh, and it's 100% perfectly in phase as well. So it can be very good to get sort of a added emphasis on a sound like a kick or a snare um, if you really want this low frequency punch that's below sort of an octave down from the actual sound. On a kick that's already the subby, you probably wouldn't want extra sub. You're going to get super, super low, blow up some subwoofers there. But, um, but it's, it's, I found it very handy, especially on, on snares and stuff, if you just want more of a low end punch. Um, and sometimes EQs just let, leave you with this ringy mess. You can't really just boost lows that don't exist in the sound. Uh, so this is a good way to get those subharmonics that don't exist in the original sound. Lastly, in the bottom row, since I'm down here, is a fuzz, which is sort of like a uh, distortion pedal type of uh, fuzz uh, wave, sh wave shaping distortion um, that allows you to really dirty up a sound and get it. I like the fuzz. Get it muddier. Nice. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, pulse with modulation is another way to mangle the sound up. This is this is really cool for like a for getting more lo-fi, dirty type of type of sound out. Works great on synth type things. If for some reason you loaded in a, a bass sound or something like that into a nerve, you can use this pulse with modulation to, much like in a synthesizer, to get sort of a different thinness and almost dead battery like sound out of it. Hmm. We have sample rate and bit reduction, which you find as plugins and a lot of hosts is ready, but I felt like they deserve to be in here as well. It can be nice to get things ringy or, yeah, yeah. or crunchy. Um, so you can use all of these uh, simultaneously as well, which is nice to get very strange combinations. Ring modulation can really turn something into FME type of new type of sound. Yeah. Soft clip is a great way if a sound's just too quiet and you want to bring it up without adding a lot of artifact. It'll clip it out, and, and if you crank if you crank it way way up, you're gonna of course hear a, a, a change in the sound quality but uh, it's trying to soft clip it out, so it's a little more like a tape saturation would be versus a hard digital clip. Yeah. But it's a great way to add a bit of gain or a, or a little bit of drive to the sound. It's great. I was using that the other day, and uh, the soft clip was one of my sort of favorite features, especially like I was finding that sometimes my kick would be too quiet, so I just put a little bit of soft clip on there, and it would just you know, boost it that bit. That's right, yeah. You know, it's something I've witnessed with a lot of, you know, I'm sort of a seasoned veteran of, of engineering in the rock world and things like that. And that's one thing that a lot of rock engineers will do is uh, in mix down, even though they're on this million dollar mixing board and everything, is they're clipping the, the kick and the snare drum. Uh, not the entire body of the sound, but just make, but at the spikiest part, they're clipping that out. And, and it's, you know, similar to what a compressor is really doing. It's like a hard limit. But that's a great way to just even things out, first of all, and then it brings, and because you're doing that, you're able to boost the, the volume up, mm -hmm. right? So now you've got this bigger sound, essentially, because it's got more body that's loud, uh, rather than this, this very tiny spike that's making your meter jump high. Now, now you're limiting that, so that spike is essentially gone, mm -hmm. and now you can have this bigger body of a sound, so mm -hmm. it can really uh, yeah, more impact that way. Yeah. So, so yeah, 